Hey people, Dan Larson here. Are you ready for a new, very nasty, virtual riot style rhythm stuff? Let's jump into it. Okay, so this is a sound I want to show you today. So let me show it again in context. So this is it, let me solo it. This is a sort of neuro kind of bass sound, but you know, as Virtual Riot does it a lot, it really works with rhythm. And this little example proves it. I mean, that this can work really well. So this sound comes entirely from Serum. So as you can see, no other effects added, only Serum. And it works really well. And if you are a drum and bass producer, a neuro producer, I bet you would love this one too. So let me hop into it and let me analyze this preset. I'm not going to build it up from scratch because it is a lot of work basically. But uh, let me show you how it works and what I did there. So first of all, I used two instances of the Monster 6 wavetables, what you can find here in the Spectral Monster 6. And I didn't even touch it, so I didn't do anything to it. I only applied a mirror warping mode here this one on oscillator A and the asymmetric plus on oscillator B. So let me try to disable them to show you the difference. Now let me do it back. Mirror, asymmetric plus. Not too much. The difference is not very drastic, but it is still there and adds a nice little crunch to it. So basically, when you want to make neuro bases, you always want to crunch those sounds, make them really crunchy and how you can solve this and how you can achieve this is using this warping mode especially the asymmetric the bend even the where is it uh, not the flip the pvm mode can work pretty well and the other thing the mirror mode is one of my favorite in the warping modes it just makes pretty good job with neuro bases and even even this rhythm stuff it can be very helpful so anyway I added a paper bag noise to make the sound even noisier. So, for example, if you want to make, uh, as I said, very crunchy neuro basses, little noise can always work pretty well. Do you struggle with sound design, bass, and song arrangement? If so, Let's Synthesize Academy can help. Let's Synthesize offers lessons to producers who want to truly improve their skills and learn more about the industry, rather than just watch a short tutorial. We have just released the course on how to learn rhythm in virtual riot style, which is something you won't be able to find anywhere else. Improve your skills and learn in a fun environment. Meet like-minded people while you're at it and enjoy the course. More will be released shortly. Virtual Riot himself recommends you to this course also. So don't waste more time. Click on the link in the description for more information and to sign up today. Again, the difference is just very slight, but it adds some pretty nice touch to the top end of the sound. This is why this paper bag noise is here. Okay, a BN filter filters oscillator A, oscillator B, the noise, and the sub oscillator too. And as you can see, the, the sub oscillator does not go out directly, so it doesn't work really as a, as a sub oscillator really, but as an additional oscillator. And I'm using a saw wave here. The first oscillator is on plus two octaves. So this gives some nice top end to it. And the main oscillator I would say is oscillator B, because that is, that gives the frequency uh, of the bass sound, because you know, when we are talking about bass sounds, we always want to stick between, for example, C1 and C, uh, C0 and C1. So I'm not a fan of using presets or making presets, you know, uh, transposed up several octaves only because of, I don't know, no reason. If you are making a bass sound, you always want to stick to the bass frequencies, which always, you know, starts from at around 12, 20 hertz and goes up to, I don't know, like 150 hertz. And those are at, and those are between C0 and C1. 
one, for example, or even we can go higher to F1. But if you push this stuff up to like C3, which is, I don't see any reason to do that. Basically what you are doing is, a, is you use a bass sound at not bass frequency. If you are using, if you are making bass sounds, please use it in the bass frequencies and bass notes. This is essential. We are making music. We're not only making sounds. So this doesn't make any sense. So this is why oscillator B is on zero. So this gives the bass frequencies of it. And oscillator A is a sort of top end, a little more color to it. This is why it is pushed up to two octaves. And I'm using another oscillator, a simple saw wave to make the sound even, you know, crunchier or maybe a little, I would say, sharper. I added this saw wave. So the band pass and the notch, because this is a multi-filter, filters all of these oscillators. And I pulled back the mix because I wanted to go out a little more top end from the sound. So I didn't want to filter all the top end out using the band pass filter. So let me show you if I push it up. So pulling back the mix, I get a lot more top end, which is, I would say, needed, especially if you make rhythm. Maybe for neuro bass, you can push it up to the max and um, the sound will be a lot neuroish. But in this case, in this example, I wanted to pull back the mix to let more top end out from the sound. Now, before we go forward, I'm using a lot of LFOs, and the first LFO is LFO 1, and it is connected to the wavetable position, the warping mode A, wavetable position B, and this is all here. It, it modulates three parameters. LFO 2 modulates stuff in the FX, and we can go to the FX now, because I think we are just finished here. I only added six voices of unison to oscillator A, and five voices to oscillator B, and there is nothing else here, really. Okay, so in the FX, I'm using a distortion, and actually it is pretty important because I bandpass filter the sound before the distortion, so this is why it is on pre mode. So bandpass filter and pushed up, I pushed up the drive to pretty drastically, and the mix is on the maximum, so we have no business to it really. A hyper, you know, just to spread the bass, add some stereo witness to it. A flanger, our beautiful flanger, so if we are making Rhythm basses or even neuro basses, a flanger again is a very, very nice way to add some more metallic top end to the sound. So with the sweeping effect, you can turn the sound a little more exciting, adding more peaks, adding more notches to the spectrum. So your sound will be a lot more interesting and not very static, you know, it will move and evolve. So using a flanger in the basses are pretty nice. The same with the phaser. And the chorus always adds some more voices, so the sound will turn a little fatter. I'm sure you hear the difference with and without the chorus. Now, the filter is in band and peak and what is it? Band and peak and notch filter mode. So this is a triple filter mode. I really love this, by the way. This is one of my favorite filter mode in in Serum, and it's just nasty, you know, it's very good if you want to make neuro basses. So let's see what controls it. LFO 2, no, sorry, LFO 3, 4, LFO 4 controls it. So I am playing between these filter modes using the morph knob. So this is what it go does, it goes from band to peak and to notch mode. And the cutoff just, you know, just adds the sweetness to it. It is always very nice for neuro basses if you want to create those awesome stuff. So <laughs> it's just very good. You know, sometimes I use the band reject mode. And it, again, it's a very nice filter. But this one with the morph knob, you can create just crazy modulations. So it is, I, I would say it's highly recommended to use this filter mode. An OTT and an EQ to tweak a little the high end at a little cut at around, where is it, Five, 500 hertz. So this is it basically, and I use several LFOs. As you can see, I'm using five LFOs. And the reason behind that is to make the sound more 
organic and not very static, you know, to move it a lot and evolve the sound a lot. Because when we are making neural basses, you, you always want to make an evolving sound, not very static. Because, for example, to dubstep or, or even rhythm basses, um, you don't need to evolve that sound too much. I mean, you don't use hundreds of effects. You want to just make the sound really metallic and strong and heavy. And with, for example, one filter, an HP filter, you just want to make it talk. But with neural basses, it's a little different. You want to make the sound uh, evolving and, uh, and you want to add a lot of movement to the sound. And it is very important. So this is why I'm using five instances of Alifos, you know, to give uh, a lot of variations to the sound, basically. And I'm using one more macro to tweak the speed of all the LFOs. So if I'm going to the metrics and let me check macro four, you can see LFO one rate, LFO two, LFO three, and LFO four rate. So this is what L macro four controls all the rates for the LFOs. So this is it basically. If you want to grab this preset, go down to the descriptions, subscribe, drop a like, give a comment. I love to hear your voices. And more importantly, check my course. It is about the Virtual Riot Rhythm Style course, a start to finish stuff. All the responses are very good. People who bought them really like it. So give a shot to it and see you next time, guys. Bye bye.